Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to see my talk today. My name is Hanami, and I'm super excited to be part of this design conference. I wanted to appreciate you all for giving me this wonderful opportunity, and I'm hoping to give you some inspirations through my talk today. And under this stressful situation with corona and negative news that we get in 2020, I really wanted to present something that makes positive moves and emotions that grows within us individuals. And as you can see here, the concept that I made is called self-care and self-healing with the power of design and how do we apply design thinking to our own lives and vision. And I wanted to use our superpower, design thinking, to promote self-care and I call this concept design yourself. I'm super excited to present this to you all today and for you to be part of it, to make some positive wave together in 2020. Here is a simple table of contents that I made for my today's talk. Um, and so we start from introduction of who I am and my idea and where it came from. And we move on to the main content where I'm presenting step-by-step -step process of designing yourself and um, with the useful tips. And finally, we'll be moving on to the questions and conversation corner. So feel free to ask any questions at the end of this talk, and I'm hoping to spark some creative conversations out of this opportunity. So I'll start from the introduction of myself. My name is Hanami Tagaki. Nice to meet you. Um, and I'm from Japan, born and raised for 20 years and moved to San Francisco three years ago for my university. I'm currently earning bachelor's degree at Academy of Art University. And I'm currently a freelance graphic designer. But at the same time, I'm a UI UX designer at the company called Good Patch based in Tokyo. And I'm actually in the process of building creative community in Japan. And a little bit more about myself. So I was born with synesthesia, a neurological condition that I've had for my entire life, where um, it's basically multiple senses gets mixed together in my brain when I try to understand information and situations. So to me, so to me, since I was born, music, tastes, and personalities, and numbers, and calendars, and letters, and words, everything have been colors and shapes and textures in my head. So that's how I understand information in my brain. Uh, throughout this talk, I'm hoping to give you some unique perspective I've seen in my life. And this is part of the reasons why I chose to be a graphic designer as well. So moving on to the actual content, design yourself concept that I made. What do I mean by that? So. When I think of designing yourself, my definition, that my definition is to consciously making decision to form who you are and who you will become in the future. And to give you some background, um, going back to my story when I was in, grow up in Japan, Japan is a, such a beautiful country with a deep history and culture, but at the same time, it's a very close society with a lot of social restrictions and um, expectations. Basically there, young students are always required to listen and follow the rules and not really having their own opinions. And so growing, growing up in that environment as a Japanese girl, I started to realize that at the age of 18 that I knew really nothing about myself. Um, so I didn't know what I liked or what I wanted to choose for my career. And I thought it's very dangerous. So I made so much effort to make some changes. And that's when I started learning English to access more information simply and joined events, lectures and seminars. And I met a lot of adults who um, actually inspired me. And however, but <laughs> I got so much of the advice and comments that differ from each other. And for a moment, honestly, I didn't know which one to trust. But soon I realized that very important message that is like a summary of everything that I've learned. And that is that they are successful in their own way because they design their own life that is absolutely unique to them. So I realized that my job is not to imitate what they've done, but to design my own. And this is very simple realization, but the very powerful one for a teenager. And this is where I got this idea from. And this is where I started designing my own life. 
So to understand our common knowledge of what the design process means to us, here's a short summary of what's, what it's consisted of. So this definition design process. Uh, we all start from research observation and empathizing with the clients and the, with the problems. And in number two step, we uh, define and summarize the problem. And number three, we ideate and start sketching and from idea to, uh, to form the, the product. We, we start prototyping and number five, we test the prototype and uh, make it into improvement. So understanding the design process. What I think the design means is that design is an organic infinite flow that beautifully changes and that is made out of perfect mixture of logical thinking and sense of wonder and plus a little bit of intuition in it. And this is really, really important thing that to keep in mind to design ourselves in a process because as the society changes, our process of designing ourselves changes as well. So just let's keep in mind that like design is a living organism that organically changes and that organically flows. So to apply those five steps of design processes um, into my concept of designing yourself, I made three steps so that it's easy to understand. So number one, to design yourself you need to know and understand who you are. And this is a research phase that is a very, that sounds very simple, but it's very important. Um, here we write down your background, interest, curiosity, and aspirations to build your life concept. And in the second step, we holistically view ourselves and define our visions. And this is where we summarize the information you've got in the first step and visualize your vision in your, in your mind vividly. And after those steps, um, we move on to number three, where we start creating um, And after those two steps, uh, we move on to the number three, where we start to create and implement the idea um, into our own real lives. And so here I'll be introducing life mood board and the little bit of the tips to, to live your aspirational self from today. So let's look into the number one deeply. So in number one step to know and understand yourself, we use our design tool, Mind Map. And we always use it in a creative process, but this time not for your project, but to do the research about you. And so first off, you put your name in the middle and it could be your full name or even nickname, but it needs to be the name that you think that represents who you are the most. And from there, take a moment to think of high interest and things that you love and passion that you think that is very important to you. And that is what you write on the purple sections that um, it could be very simple as ocean or design or creativity or traveling. But in the further branch, with, uh, which is the blue part, make sure to write down where and when you got the first curiosity for the concept and why it's important to you and how it's part of your part of you now and how you want them to grow in the future within you. And for your tip, as I write down here in the um, at the corner, make sure try to mix your professional and personal life together in one mind map because the map is a representation of ecosystem called you. And so one aspect of you cannot really represent who you are as a person. So make sure to um, include them all as a holistic you in one mind map. And from having a lot of dots in number one, second step is where we connect them to make one story out of them. So use your critical thinking and try to come up with the insight of what you've written in number one. Do, do two or more more dots connect to each other to form your life goal? Or do you see yourself working on exciting projects that combines your multiple interests? When you start to form the circle out of those dots of your pure interest, you will start to see your clear aspir aspirational self living in the scene that you've envisioned. And this is when you know that you've got this right. 
and to keep the abstract but very precious vision that you've seen, we move on to the third step where we make our life mood board to define the mood and elements to form it. Number three, create and implement in your own real life. I think we have all made so many mood boards in, in our lives for the projects, but how we done it to set the mood for our own lives. And because we are doing it for ourselves, you don't need to think that you need to explain it to other people. But there are two rules that you need to be followed to make one. And that is, you need to choose the images that you think it's very aesthetic to you. And at the same time, you need to think that it's very uniquely meaningful to you. So gather the image from Pinterest, your own album, Instagram, and any other resources that is available to you. And paint your own vision with the, in the form of collage board. And what this enables us to do is that it let us live aspirational self from today. So what do I mean by that? So see the questions here I listed. How do you want to spend your time and money today? And who do you want to be with? And what do you want to wear for self-expression today? And how do you want to get inspired? Think of what would your aspirational self you just visualized. Choose to answer for those questions I listed here. And apply the same exact answer to yourself today. In this way, you'll be directly connecting your vision to you living right now. Um, and this is how you let your vision to positively guide you. And throughout this talk, my message that I wanted to really convey is that you already have everything in you. And design is just a tool to visualize and for you to be conscious about it. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I'm super excited to see like all of your visions beautifully designed. And I really hope that we make something positive in 2020. So thank you.